Um, I want to um, mention the uh, training line that went up six, almost 61 percent. I had talked to you the other day, and I think the analogy that you made to me was the um, was like a Patriots game. Sure. They train together. Sure. Not, you know, they don't train individually That's because right. you work together as a team when you respond to a fire. So, Absolutely true. So that I thought was a very good analogy. Um, the radio uh, line that went up 21.47 percent. So the the um, those pages that you're talking about. Correct. Um, they when when the they tone out an alarm. <coughs> They make a beeping noise yep. to wake you That's up true. at night or something yep. like that, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. I, and those are those are ten years old, older, older, older. and some the, of them are seventeen. And but the other radios that you're replacing are ten years old. So no, they're sixteen years old. So we have several radios, as you might imagine. We have backup to backup, right? Um, right. But our primary radios are our functioning radios in the trucks. They're called mobiles. The mobiles that we operate on on a daily basis are sixteen years old. Our backup radios are a different breed. Uh, one's Motorola, one's Kenwood, so we're working on getting it all to the same radio as well. Um, when when our two new vehicles came in, we purchased an upgraded radio, the new radio, that's compliant with P25, it's federal compliance, um, and it's also uh, capable of handling digital uh, signals as opposed to just analog. The, the older Motorola's that we're looking to replace, the old Astros, they're just simply out of date. It's like having a tube television um, when you're, you know, most people have a flat screen. Nobody's servicing them anymore. So this is 17 years old. That's that actually I, I put in for an AFG grant that we did not receive, um, and I do believe that it was mostly based on the fact that the federal government will replace 17-year-old radios because they've filled up the entire 16-year lifespan. When I did it, it was 15 years. So, so, so you're using, you're still using analog radios. Yeah. So Seacoast Fire is still on analog. Yeah. Oh know that I, I thought perhaps you know everybody had gone digital I know the, for the fire service there was a, a problem initially when the digital technology came out um, you know digital packets right ones and zeros and if the message is sent on an analog system and part of its garbled part of its uh, you know you can't hear it most of the message might still get through in a digital system that message might go out and it never re reaches the receiver you don't get any part of that so for a while there was some communication problems that had resulted um, the technology is certainly changing and the, the reliability is increasing. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, okay, so does anybody have any questions for the chief? If you do, raise your hand, please. David? I have two questions. <clears throat> one you just discussed for the second time, and that had to do with training, which I think is a wonderful idea, and I understood the pets it's in. But you didn't train as teams before, is that what I'm understanding? We didn't have dedicated off-site training. So currently, as you might imagine, um, we do training every day, okay? The groups will train, whether it's throwing ladders, um, practicing CPR. Uh, today, they were in-house, the entire group was in-house watching the, the PowerPoint presentation before they went out and trained on cutting up the vehicles. Uh, but with on-duty training, if there's a medical aid call, if there's a fire alarm activation, they all leave. So hiring in an outside instructor, or having people, especially our newest people who are typically on the ambulance going to the first out ambulance call, they leave very valuable training and so they're required to get it back piecemeal. Uh, what I'm trying to, what I'm aiming to do with this is take the entire group on a day off and say, this is your dedicated training now. You're gonna go here, they'll, they'll be paid overtime or I'll have to cover their shift one way or the other. But they're going to go off site and they're going to train, whatever it might be, a myriad of skills that are perishable. Uh, for firefighting, and they'll go train, they'll be off-site as an entire group, and they won't be disturbed. Understood. Sorry. Thank you. Yes. The other question I had was, the original one was, the diesel was up like 66%, something like that. Yeah, since we got the WEX system, no. they, the, that tracks and it fluctuates with the price of diesel a lot Just closer. So, diesel, has diesel fuel like almost doubled in the last year compared to last year? No, but our uh, our usage is up. So, you know, we're, we're doing a lot more calls. So when those trucks are on the road, diesel fuel is getting used. Any reason for the more calls? Is it the same population, the weather? No, well, you know, it's funny, and, and obviously aside from the topic, but um, last year, if you talk to the businesses, they'll tell you that their businesses, especially at the beach, were off. 
and they were off by a certain percentage. And it depends on who you speak with, but they'll say anywhere from 20 to 25 percent. And some of that's a high number. Some people will say 16 or low or whatever. Uh, our call volume was off about 7 percent, 7 to 8 percent. But if we look at 20 percent volume loss in the corporate world, right. the business world, retail, and only a, a 9 percent loss in us, net, we've actually still gaining calls. And we're, our calls, we're averaging about 4,400 calls a year. So that's up over the last two and three years. We've continued to see a, an upward rise. More fires, more. More everything. More everything. You know, we're a lot busier than we used to be. Um, our average um, EMS run right now, I think we're doing 2,300, a little over 2,300 calls a year for, for ambulance calls. Uh, we do send a fire engine to assist on some of those fire alarm uh, activations. We have a lot more buildings now that are protected by fire alarms, which cause us to go out and inspect them. And also, if there's if somebody burns food or if there's a smoke detector activation, sprinkler systems. We've had some rough winter weather in the last two years, where down at the beach, especially where the, the businesses are uh, vacant during the winter season um, and not heated necessarily, or especially in, in areas that aren't, sprinkler systems will fail. We're running to those calls quite a bit. So as we become much more code compliant and safer, we're also experiencing different problems with an increased run volume. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, Bob. Are you satisfied all the safety equipment is state of the art that you're using? I would like to see the radios come up with the compliance. We're working on that, but uh, as far as everything else goes, I am. Um, you'll also note too in here in this budget, I have uh, part of my program replacement is four sets of gear per year per firefighter. In 2009, we received a grant for 33 sets of gear, and um, we've been working since 20, well, 2015, I think, right, mm -hmm. to replace gear. We're, we did a, a block of six units of gear that year, and then four each year thereafter, because after 10 years, the gear is no longer reliable, and they, they take it out of service. In 2019, that comes up. So we're getting everybody a new set of gear. Another goal for safety, though, Mr. Ladd, is that I would like to see everybody have a second set of gear. As you know, cancer is driving uh, driving force in our world right now, and firefighters are experiencing it at rates that are unprecedented. Um, what we would like to do is have everybody who goes out to a fire come back, wash their gear, and then still have a second set so they can respond to calls. So I'm working on that. So the radios and the gear, I think, are my two primary safety issues right now that I'm working on. Uh, I had one other kind sure. of general question. Do you keep records of where each medical call in particular is made? whether there's transport to the hospital, whether there's insurance, whether the call is for a resident. We do. Yeah, yeah and that's in, that's in conjunction with our third-party billing service, Comstock. So they have the database that we're able to monitor. What happens to the recoveries in the from the billing service when the insurance pays for the ambulance rides? There's a, there's a um, enterprise fund that was set up, and it's cool. we refer to it as Fund 27. It's for the emergency services. Um, that that particular account pays for the ambulances, pays for the cardiac monitors, all of the supplies, band-aids, IVs, um, IV supplies for tubing and whatever else. Uh, it also pays for the EMS officer's full salary and retirement. Uh, it pays for all of the incentives for the paramedics and the AEMTs, and it pays for all of the equipment like a new stretcher. I was in front of the Board of Selectmen uh, about six weeks ago requesting the purchase of a power load stretcher and uh, power cough. That's a new system to help us raise people into the back without having to do the lift. Um, you know, these coughs now are very high tech, but it's also eliminating injuries for us, which is tremendous. Um, all of that is coming out of Fund 27. That's what's driving that. And my final question I was at a meeting earlier today, and the state said there were 21 major medical events at the beach this summer on the beach. It's my understanding, are they medical events of the nature you would respond to? They were talking about lots of things where the lifeguards took care of it. Sure. We had several, we had several cardiac arrests on the beaches here. Obviously, that, the cardiac arrest is the, the main serious call, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we had several of the several cardiac arrests um, that the lifeguards were certainly instrumental on. They did a tremendous job, worked in conjunction with the firefighters, brought them up to, and then transported. Um, there's also been whether it's uh, anaphylactic reactions or difficulty breathing. Uh, as you might imagine, especially in the beginning of the season, there's a lot of people who are inexperienced beachgoers and alcohol drinkers, and those two don't mix. We see them. So there's there's an awful lot of stuff that happens down there. The 21 major, I couldn't take them off all by... by no, I, I was just 
wondering, is that a reasonable number of your responses to uh, medical incidents on the beach itself? Uh, on the sand. Yeah. But there's all kinds of property that we call the beach, right? So whether it's parking lots or the road in front, if this car accident on Ashcore, uh, to us, we're still at the beach. No. So there's a lot of different variety there when it comes to that. But as far as medical events on the sand, yeah, I think that would be okay. That would, that would be rather accurate. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else with a question for the chief? Sonny? Yeah. Um, I'm coming at it a little differently. I'm not looking to nickel a dime here or, or anything like that. I'm looking, the total budget goes up 2.9%, 2.97, almost 3%. The residents, a lot of residents in the town are on fixed income, right? There are a number of them are totally depend on Social Security. The way the Social Security system is working, Social Security gave you a 2% increase this year, sure. okay? The 2% increase disappeared in the health insurance, okay? We don't know what the Part D, the prescription drugs are going to be, but it looks like they're going to hit us with a 9% increase, okay? What I'm looking at is, from the voters, from the residents' point of view, they look, if they're income is not going up how are they gonna you know i'm afraid you're gonna end up with a default budget i understand um what i can tell you and, and to address the the question about more call volume our call volume is rising um but we are we have two businesses under one house we have obviously fire suppression and emergency medical services yeah. <coughs> under the fire suppression side we are working diligently with fire prevention to make safer buildings but there's still fires. Whether they're in our community or, or others, we're, we're assisting other communities because we don't have the, yeah, well, the need, right? You understand that visually. Yeah. But we have fires, we do have fires. So the fire suppression side, we're protecting a great deal of property. This year, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Tinker told us it's about 3.55 billion, sir? Is that right? So we're protecting three three point five five billion billion worth of property and we haven't added firefighters in well over 10 years. So we're doing it with the same staff. On the emergency medical services side, and to your point, Mr. Kravitz, uh, you know, we do have an aging population. And I think if we look at Hampton, it's one of the highest aging populations in the state of New Hampshire. Um, collectively, we see that uh, as people age, they require more medical services. Additionally, we do have a large influx down at the beach, and it's not just the sand. It's if people go to the bars, they go enjoy the, the hotels and all the other things that Hampton has to offer. We have a large increase in the summertime where we see more call volume. People are coming to use us, and, and our services are there. Well, so most of that money goes to the state. <laughs> I can't speak to that. Six hundred thousand back, right? Sure. What I can tell you is that as a as a result of the increasing age, the increasing problems that come along with population and to this and we didn't discuss it yet but the opiate problem and I know that you and I had a conversation earlier this evening about that um, we're seeing that it's it's here so we're responding to more calls more serious calls and and that's definitely I, I definitely feel and understand what you're saying um, but that that same coin is also driving us to do more work yeah. the other thing I was looking at uh, was you're 2.1 in wages. Whoever does the payroll must go. The hair must turn current. I'm 2.1? How many total, total employees? Around 40 some odd? For me? 46. Huh? 46 the fire department. 46 month. total. And you know, the way the fine print of the contract drives people crazy, I'm sure. So. Well, it is a published document. No, that's a union negotiation. I don't. Right. I understand that. All right. That's really all I. Thank you, Sonny. Anybody else? I have a question. Oh, Danielle, please. So you said that every firefighter should have a second set of safety equipment for their own health purposes. Turnokia, we call it, right? You see how, us in our jackets. Yeah. And our pants. How yep. close are you to that? For a second set. Yeah. Not very. Uh, just so that you understand the cost of that uh, to get a, a coat. Pants, boots, and a helmet. Uh, no helmet. Three thousand dollars. No helmet. Right. Yeah, a little bit over. Yeah, a little bit over. For three thousand dollars, we're going to have it: a jacket, pants, and boots. A helmet. Now, um, you'll see. In actually, if you look in there, it says six hundred eleven dollars. It's gone up at seven hundred forty dollars for a leather helmet, which okay. is what we provide. Um, 
the gloves are $58 and so are hoods. Every one of our firefighters now has two hoods so that if they come back, they can just wash. And I don't have to tell anybody in this room, you know that we experienced a, a line of duty death as a result of cancer for Kyle Jamison. Uh, we're diligent about washing our gear. But the second set, we don't necessarily have that for everybody. Uh, we don't have that. Not it seems necessarily to me that don't. that should be a priority. It is. It's just yeah. it's it, it's a cost extensive. Priority. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else, then, Danielle? Okay, uh, Steve. I was going to pretty much relate uh, what Danielle had said about as far as the equipment goes. You know, I mean, I've read the uh, surveys. I'm sure everybody else has and seen all the increase in cancer and everything across the country with firefighters. So it is important that we get a uh, program together, and it's got to be soon. You know, not not later, not two years from now. We need to get it going now in order to uh, decrease that number. And secondly, as far as the training goes, I know over the last few years, talking to different groups of firefighters, you know, one of the things they've said to me is they're not getting enough training. There is enough out there. So the fact that this new program, I know it's 59% uh, increase, but it's a small number. And then, you know, if that saves lives by getting these guys out there and train, it's been a big thing that they've, uh, you know, they've said to me, hey, training is uh, something we find important, but we're not getting enough. So I think it's a great program, and hopefully this all goes through. And the cancer thing is huge, so we have to do something about that in the very near future. So, yeah. sir, I agree. Okay, anybody else? Brian? First off, let's start this at the beginning. How many people are you short now? I'm not. So for the first time that I sit before you uh, since I've been here, we are fully stacked. So what that means is that every day begins at 9. However, we do something called running down, just so that you understand. Um, we have a captain here at headquarters, a lieutenant at the beach, and then there are seven firefighters on duty. So if there's one firefighter that's out, uh, each, each one of the officers, the captain and lieutenant, if they're out, they're covered by another officer. Um, if a firefighter is out sick, vacation, injured, or whatever, uh, training, then that, that first slot, we don't fill. So that's a vacancy during the day. So they'll run at eight for the day instead of nine. Um, but otherwise, all of the positions are now filled. Fantastic. It really is. <coughs> We've got um, some high quality candidates. I'm so proud. Oh, yeah. I'm proud of you guys, believe me. Um, I know you monitor all the signs and street lights. Do you yep. also take care of the, like the new signs, with, like speed limit signs, and things that? Like I believe that? Chief Sawyer has been uh, dedicated to. Okay, true, Chief. Yeah, glad to do it, Chief Sawyer. Happy, happy to back that bus. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, anybody else? First round. Okay, Sonny, second yeah, round. I, have, I mentioned the fireman who spoke <coughs> for the anti Democrats on the over. Right. Yeah. I gather EMS is, keeps busy with how many of the overdose calls. To date, I, I, I couldn't tell you how many overdoses. We were at 40, I believe, the last time I spoke to the Board of Selectmen. Um, we are currently at eight overdose fatalities as a result of fentanyl, um, which is uh, it's a synthetic drug. Um, it, we, we definitely have an issue here in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, we're not the highest community by any stretch of the imagination. We're about middle of the road, which is still not a designation that we like to accept. But it's it's something that our yeah, well, you see the beach to, to make it worse. <laughs> um, it's 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 not just the beach; it's everywhere. The entire community yeah. is affected. Uh, another question: Town like Exeter, about the same size. What's their fire budget compared to ours? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, I honestly don't know. I haven't talked to the chief. Uh, I was just curious. They're similar, but they they have some major differences. They're only they're staffed at five per day. Um, I do know that, and they have one fire station. They also do not have a seasonal influx. They don't have the events that we have or any of the, the need as far as that goes. We we still remain, and if I'm not mistaken, now as a result of the the changes that have occurred at the weirs, Hampton remains um, the the conflagration risk for the state of New Hampshire. So the beach, as you know from historic you know times. Uh, Fire happens, and when it does, in communities that are so, where buildings are so close to each other, uh, that, that's a real big problem. The population density and the buildings down at the beach remain a conflagration risk. We are working to make them more co-compliant with sprinkler systems and early detection smoke detectors, 
but that 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 threat remains. All set, Sonny? Yeah, all right. Anybody else with any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. How many of the 45 have second second um, gear? Can you get us that? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That way, if we could get, have that, that would be great. Sure. Okay. Anyone else? Tim? Yes. Uh, I think Jenny makes a good point. We'd like to know what the going forward risk is on that. I don't want to sure. replace this. But that, that equipment is very personal, right, to each firefighter? Yes, absolutely. So we need to be sure that we can't just take the equipment and say, oh, it's good for 10 years, because that person as an employee may not be <coughs> That's true. Uh, but however, to, to that uh, point, Mr. Jones, we have hired some people who, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing pants that were not sized for me. They were just, you know, but I, I'm not doing what firefighters do. Like I said. Th these are, yeah. <laughs> <That's easy. laughs> Thank you. But uh, in general, there, there was some spare gear, and we would use that. Um, if, if a new firefighter came in, they were issued spare gear. And there was actually a firefighter who's been here now for five years. I, I was fortunate enough to hire him who just got his first <laughs> set of issued gear last last week. Right, so, yep. so when we look at that, they, he was in a set of borrowed gear for five years. Um, but there were other people who really needed to get their gear replaced. Um, gear is good for 10 years according to the NFPA standard. However, if you are experiencing high heat due to fire, you'll have changes that need to have that replaced. Um, crawling around on your hands and knees damages the gear. It's very tough. It's made of Kevlar and Nomex, but it, glass still tears it and, you know, the wear and tear. Sunlight, UV light, will actually cause the fibers to break down. So we've got a maintenance thing that we're working on, and we are trying to get everybody a set of new gear. Yeah, the major reason they brought it up was to point out that it wasn't a simple numerical calculation to figure right. out what our going forward uh, cost would be because of these variants. Uh, but it would be nice if we get it, but I think there's so many variants that we may not be able to get a rational number. So. Um, <coughs> I noticed you spoke about um, what you refer to as Fund 27, and uh, that was related to funding all of the EMS stuff, right? Correct. So all of the EMS stuff paid out of Fund 27. Training, the EMS officer's uh, car, the EMS officer's salary, all of that. Yeah. So nothing in your budget was related to EMS? Um, most of the funding comes from 27. I don't believe there's any items in here that we pay for units. So it's a very clean line of demarcation between the functions. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, budgetarily, yes. Right. Well, yeah. right. That's what we hear about. Yeah. Right. This is money. Right. <laughs> yeah, the money is good, clear it. demarcation <laughs> to it. Right. Uh, I know operationally it doesn't necessarily, but money-wise it does, and that's great. I appreciate that. But I am confused because there's another fund out there in the world called Fund 2017, I believe, which is the Fire and Police Detail Fund. 26. It was 26. Okay, thank you. Can't remember those numbers, but I can remember the names. So the Fire and Police Detail Fund is a same similar fund to 27, except for it deals with fire and police details, right? Uh, true. Okay. But, but the funding mechanism. So I find it odd that uh, in your budget you have a detail. Uh, wages in here when it seems to me that that should be drawn out of the uh, fire and detail budget. So you, it's, it's, detail. Labeled, it's labeled detail, fireworks mm -hmm. detail, because mm -hmm. we detail a firefighter to the to that location for a duration. Um, but the board of selectmen, this was a this was a result of negotiations between the Hampton Beach precinct board of selectmen. They decided the district village. Thank you. Um, the fireworks sponsored by the the precinct. Village district. Yep. Um, I like precinct. <laughs> yeah, but legally it's I called the too. village district. So the village district. I'd like to call it something else, but legally it's the village district. Great people. Um, so they they sponsor the, the Wednesday fireworks, the um, the holiday fireworks. We have one more shoot coming up on New Year's Eve. Uh, that fireworks show was it was always covered with overtime. There was never a line item. Mm -hmm. About three years ago, we looked at that. And um, it was decided that we were going to be charging any vendors that came in. The outside vendors were Seafood Fest. Seriously, they, they, the, they were the only vendor other than the, the village district. So there was a discussion with the board of selectmen and the village district to keep that in the budget, and that's why that line item exists. So it can pay for the firefighters to go down there and work. But we call it a detail. It's not a paid detail similar to what you're talking about with the 26 fund. It's not a <coughs> private vendor detail which the 26 fund is, is private vendors funded. As opposed to a public vendor, as you say. Well, as opposed to a budget 
planet. Right. Well, you, you seem to emphasize the word private in your private. Then you Verizon, that. somebody, somebody like that. Right. They're paying for it. So it's private and public, and it's a detailed 26 fund. But you've got a separate line item here, and a, or a sub line item. Actually, it's not a line item; it's a sub line item. Yeah. And I, I just want to note that in 2016, you had zero budgeted for it. 2017, you had seven and a half thousand budgeted for it. <coughs> initiated going up to eight thousand for it. And you're saying is that sub line item is entirely dedicated to the village district fireworks. Correct. Okay. So that's basically underwriting a function of the village district operations. Underwriting a function of the fire department. But where the, the fire village department. district in order to have fireworks needs to have the fire department there. That's part of the expense of the, the right, and that's fine. Right. But it is an underwriting of their operation. In my mind, I'm not asking a question. I'm making a statement. <clears throat> Radio maintenance <coughs> continues to go up and continues to be confusing to me that we're wor working on what appears to be increasingly obvious <coughs> ancient equipment. I'd like to see something done about that. Maybe, maybe next year or whatever. Me but, too. Yeah. So that you understand. Um, uh, We've been working in conjunction with the police department on this too, because in 2018 there are going to be some changes coming about. So we're working hard on making sure that we have current equipment. Yeah, I particularly enjoy the radio maintenance topic with the police every year. So I'm sure. I'm sure Rich is looking forward to it again this year. That was on my bus. Sir. That was on my bus. Sir. <laughs> Building maintenance is up 17 plus percent. Um, yeah, as I described, we now have an agreement with uh, Palmer Scott for heating and cooling, which we didn't have for a maintenance agreement, plus our generators need to be yeah, placed I want to ask you about those generators. generators. Are those are new generators. What did you do with the old generators? The old generator that we had only at the Winniconnick Road Station okay. um, was brought to DPW and is now powering, and I don't know if the sewer plant or wherever it went, but it went down there. So it's actually working for us down at the sewer plant. So we should ask the DBW about that, and that's fine. Sure. Thanks. It's a, it was a used generator. It was a 60 kW, I believe, that they took down there. Yeah. Um, the one out of the beach fire station was an ancient relic that was it was really an, just an engine that somebody had really rewired. So that I don't think that made it through demolition, to be honest with you. So it was demolished? Probably. <laughs> uh, the new generators, are they natural gas, diesel, or gasoline? -like? They're diesel, both. Diesel. Yeah. Did you consider natural gas? I'm just curious. Uh, that was before my time. I was hired the time okay. that the fire stations came online. Thank you, Chief. Okay. I appreciate the uh, the, uh, the accounting and the detailed pages on your on your budget. This year seems to be a little bit more uh, robust than previously. I appreciate that. Sure. And uh, I thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Sonny again. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good question. Normally, if there's a fire in Southampton. You get called. Dry, you get called. Right. Is there any regional cooperation in, in buying the equipment? So typically, no. Um, <coughs> equipment ages, as you might imagine. And as I've spoken to you, what we're trying to do is maintain the the frontline equipment ten years, and then ten years in reserve. Um, we're not on the same cycle as other communities. And our use rate is certainly higher than Northampton or Southampton. Um, when we get into that, there's there's no um, consortium buying either. So what we do instead is we look at buying off of uh, state bid lists. So it's the lowest possible price, and that's what we're doing to, to purchase. But there's no no means to do a consortium bid. <coughs> All set, Sonny. Is that accurate? Okay. Anybody else? Seeing none, we have a motion on the floor with a second. But as I pointed out at the beginning, the final number um, could very well change, um, and we'll know that shortly. So, what is the wish of the committee? Do you wish to uh, vote on this number that we have now? Well, what changes is speculative. I think we should just vote on it and move on. If there's changes proposed subsequently, All right. we can vote on those changes. All right. So we have a motion on the floor and second. All those in favor? Uh, can I ask you, please, what is the exact amount of the motion? Tim, you made the motion. It's, it's, on, it's on the video. <laughs> <laughs> 347014 dollars Is that right, Christy? Kristen? 
somebody else. Okay, okay all those in favor? Raise your hand. Uh, I see most everybody. All those opposed? And Sonny is abstaining. Everybody else voted yes. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.